Now in any responsive front end framework, the grid is usually the most used element. So in this section, we're gonna discover how to use the grid by working on a specific section within the course project. So understanding the Bootstrap 4 grid, it's all easy once you get the basic concepts. All right, so let's first take a look at the course project's mockup in the specific area of the layout that we're gonna be working on next in structure with the Bootstrap grid. So right here is gonna be the section that's just underneath the hero, as we can see right here, which is where we're currently at in the project. And as we could see uh, in the teal container, we have three different blips that describe features about this fictional game. So our task is to use the grid to present this in a browser so Bootstrap's grid is based on a default 12 columns. So let's go take a look at what this would look like uh, with these 12 columns enabled over this layout. All right, so basically first we have an icon. Now this element right here, here, and here is small enough to occupy a single column, at least on a large uh, desktop view. And so then we have an associated description that goes to, uh, basically to the right of each column. And so we can see we have one column here and then three here in this block. So we have 12 total, total columns to work with, which is how uh, Bootstrap and most other responsive front end frameworks are used. Uh, and we need to try to make our columns all equal up to 12. So we have three, we have four total columns that make up each one. So three times four, you know, go back to elementary school, that is 12. So that's what we want. All right. So let's go back with this in mind to our code editor. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, Coursetra.com, where you're gonna find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month. That's it. Now also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. And in our index.html, we're gonna come outside of the very last div. So all this stuff is contained within our hero div. Now we're gonna come outside of it, just above the three script tags here. All right, so let's start off with a div class. I'm gonna hit Control B, by the way, here in Visual Studio Code to get rid of that sidebar. Uh, and equals, and we're going to create a custom class that we're going to reference here called feature wrapper. And we're going to give it another class of BG primary. And this is specific to bootstrap. And it's just basically saying the background of this element should be our primary color that we defined. All right. So then we're going to have a padding of top. So PT of five a padding of bottom. So PB hyphen five and then a margin top of five, and then also a margin top just on large screen sizes of zero. All right, then inside of there, we're gonna do a div class of container. This gives us our fixed center container, and then div class of row. So when you're doing, and you're working with the grid you always need to first establish a row class. And then inside of it, this is where your individual columns go based on the 12 grid column system. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is first define the section over here. So if we bring this back up, we'll see we have one column right here. So let's define that. So the way we do that is div class equals call hyphen one. And then inside of there, we're, that's where our icons go. And so we're using font awesome. So we're gonna put I class equals FA for font awesome, FA hyphen gamepad. That's the name of the specific icon we want to use. And then we're gonna make it large, uh, larger than default. So FA hyphen two X. Okay, let's also add another div class for the next section, which is, which is the description. So this is gonna be div class equals call hyphen three. And then inside of here, we're going to put in, I'm just gonna paste this off screen, copy it off screen rather, and paste it in here. All right, so let's save this and make sure you have the gulp command running in your console so we can look at it in the browser. 
All right, so here we are. Now the issue here is this text is white. So let's go ahead and fix that real quickly before looking at this a little bit further. Control B, we'll go back to our style.sass file and I'm simply going to reference our feature wrapper and we're gonna put color zero, 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 zero for black. All right, now let's go back real quickly to our browser. Okay, so this right here looks exactly as we want it almost. Uh, we, we haven't centered this yet. Um, let me just, we're gonna go back real quick. You don't have to do this, by the way. We're going to, I'm just going to copy this and paste it three times and then save. We're gonna go back. Okay, so this looks pretty close to what we want over here, right? Yeah. So what happens though when we drag this in? All right, this is still all good. Nothing seems too cluttered. All right, so now we switch over here to the small version and look how cluttered it starts to get. This here looks bad. All right, so that means we need to make some responsive adjustments so that each one of these columns here will maintain its own column and they're gonna become stacked on top of each other. So we have to make some adjustments in order for that to work pro properly. So I'm gonna back up just to about there and we're gonna make some changes here to these class names, okay? So what we're going to change now is instead of just call one, we're going to put in call hyphen a screen size of small and then 12. So what that means when you change this, it's going to mean automatically, uh, let me go ahead and save this. Let me just go back here and see what changes. We can now see that this is occupying its own column. It's not left aligned to this. All right, so we also want to change it and or add rather call hyphen medium, which is the next size up right here to one. So that'll go back to one on medium and large sizes. And so I'm also gonna add text center, which is gonna center that icon. And I'm also going to add margin bottom hyphen three, and then margin bottom on medium will be zero. So let's go ahead and save this real quick. I'm also gonna make adjustments to this. Again, call on small will be 12, and then call on medium and up will be three. We're gonna text center this, and this text will be centered by default. Actually, if I save this real quickly, let me just show you, and you don't have to copy this. I wanna show you kind of just uh, before and after when I add these classes, uh, what they each do. All right, so right here, this looks actually pretty good. Now let's come back out and see what happens. All right, so notice how it's still centered right here. We don't really want that. I think it looks better left uh, basically all to the left and left aligned. So what we'll do is after text center on these elements, we're gonna put text hyphen also uppercase just to make it all uppercase and also text hyphen MD for medium and up left. So now let me add a couple more just for margin and uh, on the bottom right here. We're gonna push them away from each other a little bit more. So margin bottom three, and then margin bottom on medium will be zero. Okay, so now let's save, and I'll get rid of these two. Copy and paste this. Save it. There we go. So now we have this looking good. And there we go much better. So I'm going to pause right here real quickly just to customize these and then I'll show you the code and then you can pause as well if you wish. Okay, so all I did was change this, the uh, class of FA sitemap right here from gamepad to sitemap to also line chart, FA line hyphen chart, and then also these custom descriptions. So if I save and go back, there we go. Awesome. Okay, so now hopefully you understand on at least a basic sense of how the grid system works and how you can use the sizing to create uh, custom adjustments based on uh, the amount of columns they take up.
All right, so in the next section, we're going to go ahead and finish this off by doing a form that will be situated beneath this area right here. All right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish our layout right here by adding a third section. So we have our hero section up here with our navigation. We have this feature container down here. And then in the bottom, I uh, will have an email capture section with a simple form and a call to action button with a text field. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on that. So I uh, right here we have our feature wrapper and this is our teal color um, down there. So we don't want anything inside of there. It's gonna be outside of it completely. So let's go ahead and put in a new div of ID of join container. We're gonna give it a class and we're gonna give it some margin or padding rather um, to push things away from that teal container. So part padding top of large hyphen six, which is our custom sizing class we already added. Uh, padding bottom will be large hyphen, yep, six as well. And then padding top will be five. All right, so then inside of there, we'll put in a div class of container and every all the text inside of this container is gonna be centered. So text center. And then inside of here, we're gonna have a heading and a subheading of as well. So we're gonna put H2 class equals text hyphen uppercase and give us your email. Okay, and then I, we're gonna do an H4 class of text uppercase as well. And we'll give you awesome stuff like beta invites and discounts. Get rid of that semicolon there, and then I uh, H4. All right, so let's save this uh, just to see what it looks like right now in the browser. Okay, so we'll make some adjustments. Doesn't look like the greatest thing you've ever seen. Uh, so underneath that, we're gonna have a form. So we're just gonna put a basic form tag in here. Inside of here, we're gonna have a div class of form hyphen group. And this is specific to Bootstrap Forms. So if you check out the Bootstrap 4 documentation, uh, you'll see you know, how you basically set it up. And the way you do that is to attach a form group. And we're going to put row. And then we're going to give ourselves some padding here. Padding top of large 5. Padding bottom of large 5. And then padding top 5. All right. Inside of here, we're going to have a column. So div class equals call hyphen small 12. So we want these to stack on top of each other. This is gonna be the container for the text field where you enter the email. And then also call medium five. So on medium sizes and up for screen sizes, this will occupy five columns. So it's gonna be left aligned to a submit button. And then offset hyphen MD on medium and up two. So the offset class is something we haven't used before, but we're using it now. And what this does is it pushes over the uh, our column here by two columns. All right, so we'll see how this works. I'll show you a before and after real quickly, just once we get that text field in here. So we're gonna put in an input type of email, class is form control. And again, this is specific to uh, Bootstrap 4. And then margin bottom, bottom, we're just gonna give it four. ID, you can put whatever you want. I uh, Example input. And then we're also, if you want to remain consistent in applying your area right here, Araya or area, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. Uh, and then also placeholder equals E, uh, let's see, enter email. All right. So let's save this for now and see what it looks like. Okay, so I notice how it's, this is where the first column begins. There's probably another column right here. So it pushed it over uh, to the left, or to the right rather, by two columns, and that's what that offset does. Now, of course, if we bring this back to a small screen size, we'll see it occupies the whole 12 because we added a uh, call smallum 12 to it. All right, so let's uh, keep on going. So next, I'm gonna just going to copy this part and we're gonna paste it. 
All right, so for this, we're not gonna offset anything. This is where our button's gonna go. So let's delete that. We're gonna put in button, type equals submit, class equals BTN. Again, this all this stuff is specific to buttons for Bootstrap 4. So BTN primary, BTN block, text uppercase to make it uppercase, and then BG primary for uh, the background color. So it's gonna be that teal color that we have defined. All right, so let's save this now. All right, so as you can see, it's a little bit too large. Right here, this all looks good. And by the way, we're gonna style this so it's not all white. It's too much contrast in my opinion. And the reason this is too large is because I, I didn't put this correctly. I didn't change this from five to three. So let's save that. There we go, much better. Okay, so let's make some adjustments here to the, uh, the this area. We're also gonna give it a custom background, which is what the third image is for in our assets folder. So let's go ahead real quickly. Um, we'll go to styles.sass, which is right here. And we'll start off by referencing our join container. All right, so the background is gonna be URL, assets, screen one, dot JPG, no repeat. Background size is cover. And then we're going to, well, let's go ahead and save just so we can see where we're at currently. There we go, it's got like a screenshot of like a first person shooter or something back there. Kind of two unrelated images. That's no big deal though. And then also let's reference our H2, which is embedded inside or nested inside. So we have letter spacing. We're gonna make it like four pixels and then font weight, bold. Blah. And then you can see what that does to this section right here. Let's also reference the H4. This is gonna be color simply gray. And that will help create distinction here between uh, these two elements. All right, so the primary uh, thing that we want drawn to in terms of visual hierarchy is this section right here. And then form control. This is gonna allow us to style that text field. So background, we're gonna make it not black, but kind of close. So we just want six ones. And then also we're gonna give it a border of three pixels, solid and F2 or no, 2F, 2F, 2F. Let's save this so far and just see what happens. All right, that's better. And then also we're gonna give it some padding to just enlarge it a little bit of 10 pixels. So there we go. And then also finally, our very last rule set to define is our button. We're gonna make it a padding of 12 pixels, beefing it up a little bit, border of none, and a color of black for the text. And then there we go, guys. Oh, we also may wanna make that cursor pointer. All right, awesome. And so that, my friends, is it for this 100% free course, of course. And uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and check it out, what it looks like on the various screen sizes. So we're getting down to tablet size. This is a smaller tablet size. Kind of cool how the uh, background like that adjusts based on our background cover. And then also smartphone size. Awesome. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a lot. Be sure to, uh, if you're watching this, for example, for instance, on Udemy to check out my uh, author profile for more courses. If you're watching this on a site like Skillshare, please do the same. And then if you're at Corset or my other site, Corsetra.com, be sure to check out other courses there and look me up on YouTube as well. I'm, I'm pumping out content left and right like a madman. All right, see you later.